While you might know quite a bit about the Hargreaves family and their past and future foes, there's still plenty left to uncover. From Way's creative process to some behind-the-scenes drama, here's the untold truth of the Umbrella Academy. When comic creator Gerard Way first came up with the idea for the Umbrella Academy, his primary focus in life wasn't on writing a story about a dysfunctional family of superhero outcasts. Instead, he was deeply entrenched in his music career. In 2006, My Chemical Romance, the rock band that touched the lives of an entire generation of emo kids, had just released The Black Parade, the follow-up album to their 2004 hit Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge. Way spent a huge amount of his time in cramped touring quarters with his bandmates, who he told NME helped shape the personalities of the Hargreaves characters. He explained, Being in a band at really close quarters, as anyone who's had that experience will tell you, is like being in a dysfunctional family. The chemistry of that is really interesting to me. I can see the guys from the band in each of the characters. That makes no sense. Well, what if you were smarter? More so, Wei found himself using the comic as a means to sift through his entire experience with the band, from the people he came into contact with along the way to the fame itself. Like Wei and his bandmates, the Hargreaves are a sort of self-formed family, and like the band, they struggle with their own family issues. He said, A lot of that was my way of processing the experience My Chemical Romance had, if I'm being totally honest. Three comic volumes and a TV series into The Umbrella Academy, and it's difficult to imagine the Hargreaves' siblings as being anything other than adopted family members. I guess I'll see you guys in, what, 10 years? When Pogo dies? Not if you die first. Yeah, love you too, sis. Everything about them reads like a dysfunctional family, from their sometimes eagerness to please their father to their fierce sibling rivalry. But it wasn't until Gerard Way was well into writing that he decided to actually make them related in some form or fashion. He told Vulture that when he first created them, they were just this collection of weirdos. Had the Hargreaves only been a collection of weirdos, the likelihood of the comic going on to be as successful as it's become is probably pretty remote. One of the greatest aspects of the Umbrella Academy is that it feels much more like a family drama set in a superhero setting than it does a superhero story with a family drama side plot. Readers, and now viewers, are tuning in to see what the Hargreaves will do to and for each other. Taking down a giant killer spaceship in the guise of the Eiffel Tower is just an added bonus. One of the big story elements of the show is the will-they-won't-they they back and forth between adopted siblings Luther and Allison. Throughout the first season of the series, it's made clear that the pair have feelings for each other that stem beyond the familial. And by season one's sixth episode, The Day That Wasn't, they're finally able to share their first on-screen kiss. For some, the relationship feels, in a word, gross. And Gerard Way gets that. He told The Hollywood Reporter that when he first wrote the comic in his 20s, he didn't see much of a problem with it, but said, But now that I'm 40, I'm like, yeah, but they still grew up together. That's kind of f***ed up. As it happens, the romance between Space Boy and the Rumor may not be the only one that toes the line of social acceptability. In the Umbrella Academy comic, Vanya and Diego have their own connection as well. Not long after Dark Horse published the first volume of the Umbrella Academy in 2008, Universal Pictures picked up the rights to the project. At the same time, the comic was only the second Dark Horse property to have been purchased by the studio. The first was R.I.P.D., which wasn't exactly a success. The Umbrella Academy movie sat in development limbo for a number of years, which included a writer change in 2011, before Universal finally decided to let its option expire. Sorry, liar. Drop dead. Low blow. Gerard Way explained to NME that once the movie was out, he teamed up with Jeremy Slater, who wrote the pilot for the TV series and helped shop it to several networks. In 2017, Netflix picked up the rights, and a year later, we got the small screen version of the Hargreaves family. According to Way, the series wound up being a better option for the material anyway. Had Universal gone ahead with the film, it would have been the, quote, first postmodern superhero movie, which he didn't think audiences were quite ready for at the time. If The Umbrella Academy feels more like an extended film than a TV series, there's a reason, and it has nothing to do with the fact that the project spent so much time and development as a feature at Universal, and everything to do with showrunner Steve Blackman's background. Prior to taking over the Netflix series, Blackman worked on Altered Carbon, a huge sci-fi original on the platform. Like Altered Carbon, The Umbrella Academy borrows much of its visual style from the film, and they're the only two TV series that are shot on Alexa 65, a large-format digital camera. 
Blackman told the Los Angeles Times that the show's visual aesthetic is in large part due to the camera itself, explaining, It's a film camera, but it's beautiful and cinematic, so it really gives you the sort of almost anamorphic look. We're not quite letterbox, but we have that style. With a group of misfit superheroes at its core, it would be easy to lump the Umbrella Academy in with any number of comic-based action pieces, which could perhaps be traced back to Steve Blackman's prior work on Legion. The Umbrella Academy walks a strange line between stylized science fiction, hyperviolence, and overall ridiculousness, but it works. What the hell is he doing here? Go faster! Whee! According to Ellen Page, however, the show's visual style was actually influenced more by a few directors who've had zero experience in the superhero realm. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Page explained that the Umbrella Academy took many of its cues from Harold and Maude director Hal Ashby, as well as Wes Anderson. Their influence is clear, particularly in terms of the relationships between the Hargreave siblings. While clearly dysfunctional, there's an obvious affection among them, however dry that affection may sometimes come across. This family's amazing. <laughs> Although the trauma of being raised by an unloving, adoptive father whose only interest ever seemed to be in exploiting his children's superpowers takes its toll on every one of the Hargreaves' children, it's especially damaging to Vanya. It's because of her strained relationship with both her father and her siblings that she eventually heads down the path toward supervillainy, culminating in her becoming the white violin and setting the apocalypse into motion at the end of season one. While the character's arc in the comic is a little more straightforward, on the show, Vanya's slow descent into eventual madness is laid out meticulously. I'm afraid there's just nothing special about you. Steve Blackman told The Hollywood Reporter that a big part of the series for him was focusing on the psychological effects of childhood trauma. Vanya's particular arc came about on account of Paige's desire to give her a, quote, grounded transformation. It also serves as an explanation for her on-screen relationship with Leonard, who's kind of the textbook definition of an emotional abuser. While Blackman admits that, given more time, Vanya probably would have seen the relationship red flags, she was already so damaged that Leonard is able to manipulate her more easily. One of the most notable changes and biggest improvements between the comic and the series is in terms of cast diversity. Steve Blackman explained to The Hollywood Reporter that representation was important to the series crew, so when it came down to casting the show, they made some changes, and one of the biggest ones was with Cha-Cha, who got the gender swap treatment for the series and is played by Mary J. Blige. But getting Blige wouldn't be easy, or at least that's what Blackman assumed when her name was first dropped in a casting meeting. <laughs> oh. Turns out, all it really required was the promise of her own stunt work. Recounting his conversation about Blige, he told Vulture, They go, yeah, she wants to be an assassin. She wants to throw punches and kick and shoot. So I got on the phone with Mary and she's like, if you let me punch and shoot and do my stunts, I'm in. For her part, Blige has been a big fan of playing an assassin. The musician actress told the Los Angeles Times that she loves the stunts, saying, I always wanted to learn how to shoot a gun. I know how to shoot all types of guns now, and I know martial arts. Netflix's The Umbrella Academy may exist in a slightly more grounded world than its comic counterpart, but there are certain things that point to the fact that it's at least set in a reality not quite our own. Steve Blackman told Slash Film that the show's lack of technology is one of those nods to the comic's JFK timeline origins, wherein the former president actually survives that fateful 1963 day in Dallas. And while Allison's use of microfiche is a pretty cool Easter egg, there's one huge technological advancement that's completely missing from the series, cell phones. Hey, hey, excuse me, sorry to bother you. Could you tell me what year this is, what day? In a cast interview with Screen Rant, both Ellen Page and Robert Sheehan expressed their appreciation for the show's lack of cellular technology. Sheehan said, You know, you're offered a respite from a world where it's completely governed and obsessed by smartphones. It's a new way. Humans don't communicate the way they once did anymore. The soundtrack for the Umbrella Academy may be just as eclectic as the series characters themselves. From Tiffany's I Think We're Alone Now and Nina Simone's Sinner Man, to Radiohead's exit music for a film, the show has no shortage of varied and interesting music. But varied and interesting as it is, it's still a little too mainstream in the eyes of Gerard Way. The comic creator told NME that although music played a huge role in how he approached the overall feel of the book, specifically Teenage Fan Club, The Pixies, and Smashing Pumpkins, when it came to the show, he didn't have much to say over what went into the soundtrack. 
That was left to Steve Blackman. As Way explains it, Steve came to it with a pretty clear idea of the music he wanted to use. It's Way's hope, however, that they can use the success of the show in its second season to introduce audiences to music that he refers to as, quote, more left of center stuff. He told the publication, I'd always pick a song by a band like Wire or Gang of Four over the sort of stuff Steve does, although I think he's incredible at using songs you've heard before in really interesting ways. The Umbrella Academy comic had been a work in progress for over a decade by the time Netflix aired its first season, but as of 2020, only its first three volumes had been released, Apocalypse Suite in 2007 and 2008, Dallas in 2008, and Hotel Oblivion in 2018 and 2019. Plans for a fourth volume, titled Sparrow Academy, have been announced, but no rollout date has been set. According to Gerard Way, he's planned for eight volumes total, which means that, hopefully, Netflix will follow suit with an eight-season run. Way told The Hollywood Reporter, Stephen Blackman knows what happens in all of those eight volumes. I wrote up this document for him and the writers, which explains what will happen through all the graphic novels. I'm sorry, am I the only one that's skeptical here? <clears throat> I mean, how exactly do you know all of this about what's his name? But though the story has been mapped out for the comic, you shouldn't expect to see everything translate exactly from the page onto the screen. According to Blackman, their goal with the show is to keep close to what's happening in the comic. But when it comes down to it, some things just aren't going to work on screen. Luckily, series creators are able to use Way's outline to plant future plot lines early on, so things will come together further into the Umbrella Academy's seasons. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.